Hey Reddit, what are some butthole celebrity encounters you or someone you know have experienced? Donald Rumsfeld once farted in front of me at an airport in DC. Not really an butthole move as it's natural, but involves an asshole. I'm kind of disappointed this is my only celebrity encounter. Just wait till you hear what else he's done. Bill Nye. Met him after a speech he gave at the university I was attending. He was a dong the entire time. Yep. I grew up in Seattle and when I was 6 I saw him when I was out walking with my mom. He was gardening in his front lawn. I ran up to him and told him how excited I was to see him I was maybe one step off of the sidewalk onto his lawn. He screamed at me to get off his lawn and then turned his back. My mom still talks about how much of an butthole he was 20 plus years later. Worked at an entertainment venue during high school as an usher. Teenage Justin Bieber was a huge butthole to his crew but actually really pleasant and nice even to the workers at the venue. He took the time to go around the concourse and take pictures with some of the girls that worked concessions. He dated one of my good friends in high school before he got famous. He randomly dumped her one day and told her that she has an Adam's apple and he couldn't date someone like that. She's still sensitive about it. Ali Hermy, drill instructor from Full Metal Jacket. A few months ago he was doing a promotion for Glock and signing autographs. I'm an army veteran who went with a marine veteran buddy of mine. He would take a good 2-3 minutes to chit chat with everyone in line. As far as I could tell, all marine vets, when my friend and his daughter were done he said the next guy is with us. But his army army responded with you have a freaking friend in the army and had a disgusted look on his face. I went up. He signed a blu-ray I had bought, smiled for a photo, and he immediately called next. As I walked away he said you know kid, for a solid you almost look half normal, not even mad. I expected nothing less from that old marine freak. Take that as a joke, he's a really humble marine vet. I know cause my dad who is retired air force went to one of the Glock promotions he was wearing an AF shirt. Gunny just looked at my dad straight in the eyes and called him a P. My dad called him a crayon eater. It got really tense but then Gunny and my dad broke down laughing hard. So yay, not an butthole but a jokester. Back in the late 80s my friend Joy and I were shopping at the Tower Records on Sunset late one Saturday night. It was the night I bought an LP copy of the Suga Cube's Life's Too Good. Anyway, this guy started making a scene. He was obviously coked out of his mind and he was roaming up and down the aisles grabbing merchandise right and left. He was knocking things over and looming over the other customers. He was real twitchy and sweaty, too. He kept shouting it's alright, my fat wife will pay for it, she's got money coming out her ass. His wife had a scarf and glasses on, and was trying to hide her face when she backed into me and my friend. She gave us an embarrassed smile and we realized it was Roseanne. The guy on the shopping rampage was Tom Arnold. I met Mickey Mouse. He walked away from me though. My first rejection. It might have been time for him to go on break. Smoke a button called to make sure his child support check got credited. Bill Murray drunkenly hit on my mom's then 14 year old stepsister in the 80s, apparently. I met Jerry Seinfeld after a show he did once. I told him he did a great job. He said he was aware. In his defense that is sort of funny. Used to live near Chevy Chase. I was at borders with a friend and the line was huge. In walks Chevy Chase. He went right to the front of the line. Someone said excuse me. There's a line and he actually said don't you know who I am and turned his back on the guy. I've always heard he was a dong. And I 100% believe it. A friend of mine was walking down the street when he sees a rather handsome fellow in sunglasses with an immaculate chin coming his way. He recognizes this god among men as the great Bruce Campbell. As Bruce gets closer, my friend nervously exclaims hey, you're Bruce Campbell and without breaking stride. Bruce lowered his sunglasses and in his cool, collected, delivery replied somebody's gotta be, and kept walking, proving once and for all, Bruce Campbell is an butthole, wait I meant awesome. Bruce Campbell is awesome. When I was 7, 2006, me and my dad got really good seats to watch the Mets. There was some man wearing a suit with a beautiful woman next to him sitting in the row next to us. My dad insisted that I walk up and ask for an autograph. I was too shy, so we headed toward him together. I was standing an arm's length away from Donald Trump. 
I was waving at him, but he purposely decided to not acknowledge me. Even when Melania elbowed him to try to get him to wave he just continued to glare at the field. After a few seconds she stopped trying and me and my dad headed back to our seats. Bill Murray took some of my french fries once. Well, he wasn't an butthole. But when I was working customer service for a satellite TV company, I talked to Weird Al. He was trying to get free equipment and his account wasn't eligible at the time. He wasn't a dong about it. Told him to call back in 6 months. I didn't do the hey, are you Weird Al thing. I politely called him Mr. Yankovic the whole time. Whoopi Goldberg book signing. I was 10. I told her I loved her movies. Dead face looks at me and says okay, so frick Whoopi Goldberg. She probably knew you were lying. No one loves her movies. Alice Cooper was 14 when me and a friend went to his gig. Did that thing you do as kids and waited outside the venue for 4 stroke 5 hours to meet him. When he showed up he had his security pin us to the wall by the throat and walked past us without even a hello. Sure looking back, we have no right to get his attention, but we were two kids. There was no need to be so heavy handed. Really soured me on my favorite singer at the time. Friend of a friend who was an extra for Suicide Squad. She was told by some of the producers as a joke to bump into Jared Leto. And so she did. He was a complete butthole to her and wanted her off the set and fired for that. Even though it was just meant to be a joke he took the situation completely out of proportion. He's notoriously a method actor. To a fault. I find it crazy to think any of the producers thought this was actually a good idea. Makes me think the producers were trying to cause some sort of drama on set and used your friend of a friend as a pawn. Emma Watson. I was volunteering at Glastonbury Festival as an Oxfam steward. Oxfam get paid for my time. I work 3 shifts and get into the festival for free. Had done it a few times and was placed on the hospitality gate. It was mostly just folk who had bought hospitality tickets but we got a few celebrities too. Everyone was dead friendly and it was a great place to work. I checked Ollie Murr's ticket and met Carol Vorderman who was out with the late Richard Whiteley's wife to celebrate his life as it was 5 years since he died. At one point our supervisor is called away. She's gone for about 30 minutes which was odd. When she gets back she tells us all we are to just let the next two people through. No ticket checks no nothing. A minute or so later Emma Watson storms through the gate with, I assume, her boyfriend a few paces behind. I'd been saying good morning to everyone who passed through because it passed the time but both of them utterly ignored me and stormed on in. They'd been furious that they had to have tickets check like the plebs and been utterly horrible to our supervisor when she'd been called away. I don't personally have any really bad ones, but my friend has been a Chicago bartender for years and she has countless stories. Billy Corgan getting upset because he'd try and pay for drinks in foreign currencies and she wouldn't accept them. Vince Vaughn needed a ride back to his hotel after getting crap faced. My friend offered to drive Vince and his manager. She put on a rap song and Vince immediately made a racist comment. She claims to have pulled over and left them on the side of Lakeshore Drive. Jeremy Piven basically being a human pose all the time. He'd come into her bar and rack up huge tabs and never tip. Buzz Aldrin. My father is a pilot and Aldrin was on my dad's flight to DC a few months ago. Aldrin took a pic with my dad and the plane's captain but when a flight attendant asked for a photo or autograph Aldrin laughed him off and said that's way above your pay grade and went to his seat. He was my idol for the longest time, it really sucked finding out he was a dong. I binged on astronaut crap for a bit, documentaries, biographies, everyone really freaking hate this dude. He was legit one of the worst narcissists on earth. So, to preface this story, my name is Fox. My parents named me after Fox Mulder from the X-Files. I didn't really like my name when I was younger but my parents have always been excited about it. When I was 13 or so my father surprised me with Comic Con tickets. I'm not really into comics but I played MTG and have always been enthused by the Intel tech demos and such. So I was excited. He also told me that we were going to get an autograph by David Duchovny, actor behind Fox Mulder and I though that was pretty dang cool. My dad was super excited as he was a fan. I'm not sure of the details but I do recall he had recently recovered from a pee addiction of some sort. Anyway, we waited in line for a really long time. Spent $80 on a picture for him to sign. We get up to him and introduce ourselves. 
he's very unenthused. My dad is so excited to tell him that I'm named after his character. His response oh, what's his last name to which my dad replied and then David goes well, that works too I guess. And then we were escorted out, we weren't allowed to take a picture either, seems like a nice guy. My friend was an extra in the final Harry Potter movie and he said that Emma Watson was a huge bee the entire time, especially to the crew and the other extras on set. My friend dated Michael Phelps, he was a total douche tool, carried his freaking medals around with him everywhere. I was supposed to interview the band Chimera years ago and they straight up told me to frick off because I look too young. Jason Mamoa was at Comic Con in Adelaide and he had dinner with my sister. She paid extra for the experience less than half an hour later he didn't have the courtesy to even acknowledge her existence as he walked right next to her in the hotel bar. Overall the guy looked like now he has a movie of worth he thinks he is too awesome to be human. He just gives off the overall jerk vibe. Ted Nugent would frequent the archery shop my dad owned and would stare at me like a perv. I was deaf under 14 years old, and run his mouth like a crazy person while chewing gum like a cow and leaning all over the glass counters trying to school my father on the crap he was selling. My father had a really good relationship with Frank Stallone. He would swing by the shop and chat with my dad often. Frank wrote us cards for holidays and always asked my dad about me. One day Sylvester Stallone comes strolling in. When I was pretty little I accidentally mistook him for Frank because I saw him at a glance from across the store. I ran over to get a hug and when I got closer I saw it wasn't Frank Sil gave me the cold shoulder and made some remark about getting away from him. And lastly, I tried to bum a cigarette off of Jared Leto in Hollywood like 8 years ago, as he was smoking. He said he didn't smoke. He then proceeded to go into Club Moscow which was 18 plus and pick up young girls and leave. I have friends who worked with him or for him and they say he has a stack of NDAs in his glove compartment. Dirt bag. When I was younger, touring bands would crash at my place frequently, when they were an unknown band opening for a much better band. Death Cab for QT crashed at my place I thought they were terrible but I still always spot a touring band shoots tough. The soon to be heartthrob lead singer broke my toilet. I opened for Frankie Muni's rock band. Hung out in the green room with them. Frankie just laid on the floor watching TV the whole time ignoring everyone. I was waiting at a crosswalk at LAX. I turned over and I found out that George Lopez was standing next to me. I looked at him and said hey, thanks for the laughs. Then reached out my hand for a handshake. He simply said yeah ignoring my handshake and turned and walked away. Second hand but two bad stories about Kanye surprise surprise. 1. Co-worker was on same flight as him but of course he screamed no pictures to everyone and when people were getting on the plane. He was sitting in the front and covered his head with a blanket and was grumpy the whole time. 2. Sister's friend saw him at a store. She was walking out and he was walking in and he was actually in the way but as she passed by he glared her down the whole time like she was the one that was in the way. Gary Ablett spelled my name wrong. We have the same name. Friend of mine waited on Fred Schneider. B-52s. Said he was the most arrogant and demanding prick he ever waited on. And so badly wanted to punch the crap out of him. Saw Shaq at the theater people said look at Shaq he heard as he started just shouting no freaking autographs. This was when he was still a Laker. My friend screamed no wonder everyone likes Kobe more. Shaq gave us a death stare and my friend flipped him off. Ellen DeGeneres. My cousin waited on her and her entourage and Ellen lost her crap when they got her order wrong. Yelling don't you understand who I am hated that be ever since. You don't abuse servers and people in retail. They are already being abused having to come into their jobs. So when I was waiting on John Cougar Mellon Camp, I didn't recognize him. Some guests pointed it out to me. He was fine but I got the distinct impression that he was trying to be noticed, slowly looking around, making eye contact with people at other tables. Upon leaving he decided to slowly stroll through the restaurant and, coming up to a family with a child in a high chair said to them, cute kid. I'll buy him off your for 200 bucks. Now this is an exceedingly weird thing to say but to make matters worse, the family was from Germany and has no idea who Johnny Cougar is, just a stranger offering to purchase their child. Looking back on it, I think that as someone who used to be more famous than he is now, he was craving some recognition. 
My husband and I saw Dennis Rodman arriving at our hotel in New York. My husband politely asked him for a quick photo and the rude prick put his hand up, as you would when you want to silence someone from talking. He was in a bad mood after attempting to flirt with an attractive African American woman who would not give him the time of day. I was fortunate enough to meet the members of Metallica a few years ago. Everyone was really cool, except the lead singer James. I was only about 15 at the time, and the way he acted when meeting a young fan was as if he didn't have time for it. Really peeved me, considering his fans are the only reason he is where he's at. You've been visited by the Banana Guardian. He will protect you and all of your bananas, but only if you come and protect us Mighty Doggo if you are new to the channel. You can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.